This is Jennifer Allen reporting for RSNA News. I'm here at RSNA headquarters with Dr. Ken Wang to discuss how artificial intelligence applications will affect radiology. Dr. Wang, what are the trends in 3D printing that members can expect to see next year? Well, thank you for that question, and thanks for having me today. Um, you know, I think there are a number of trends that we're keeping our eye on with 3D printing. Um, so here are uh, some of those. One is in the area of materials, and uh, materials are always something of interest to people making clinical 3D models, and there's been a lot of continuous advancement in the nature of the materials that are available to us, and I think that will continue in the coming year, um, and materials will continue to advance in terms of um, color properties and other physical properties, such as transparency, <laughs> flexibility, that kind of thing. Um, and the cost of those materials will also, we expect those, um, those materials to come down in cost, and so as the uh, scope of options expands and the cost uh, decreases, that will just increase the scope for um, clinical applications of these models. <clears throat> to mention a few other trends, um, machine learning is something that we hear a lot about in general in radiology and elsewhere, and certainly um, here at RSNA at the annual meeting, uh, that's a big topic of discussion. Often that's um, used to detect imaging abnormalities. It's also something that can be relevant for 3D printing, and um, people are starting to use uh, machine learning-based techniques for image segmentation, that is the delineation of structures inside images. That's something that could be a big impact in uh, the workflow of creating these 3D printed models. <clears throat> Two others that come to mind are uh, in the area of quality assurance. Um, and I think in the coming year, we'll see more work to formalize and to expand the processes that are used to assure the quality of printed models. Uh, so that's something else for us to keep our eye on. And then finally, I think we're going to see a continued expansion in the scientific literature around 3D printing for clinical applications. And that literature will just continue to expand and I think uh, support the further adoption of this technology. What challenges does 3D printing continue to face? So I think one key challenge for us in clinical 3D printing is the relative lack of reimbursement. And uh, this has been, you know, people have been making clinical 3D models for a number of years now and developed a number of important clinical applications. However, um, even though it takes a fair amount of time and effort and expertise to create these models, uh, there really isn't broad-based reimbursement for this work. And so it's done as a clinical service. Um, <clears throat> but this is something that uh, the community is working to address. Uh, as of this summer, summer of 2019, there were new CPT, Category 3 CPT codes that were introduced. <clears throat> These are codes that will allow CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, to track the use of clinical 3D printing. <clears throat> and then another effort that uh, the RSNA 3D Printing Special Interest Group is heavily involved with is a collaboration between RSNA and ACR to build a national registry for 3D printing uh, data. That registry will augment that Category 3 CPT um, code information in that it will allow us to now understand <clears throat> why are people creating clinical 3D printed models, how are they doing it, how complex are those models, that sort of information. And so um, that will all be very helpful, I think, in moving towards a goal ultimately of achieving reimbursement for this work. What are some of the forthcoming innovative clinical applications for 3D printing? Yeah, so um, I think we are going to see some interesting new things. Uh, there's a group led by somebody named James Weaver at Harvard. He's doing a lot of interesting work with a new technology called gradient-based printing or voxel printing. And what that lets us do, or um, what he has shown, is using 3D printing to print volumetric information, which is a little bit different from printing the surface-based information that we're traditionally used to thinking about in 3D printing. <clears throat> I think that's going to enable new applications in visualization in terms of using these volumetric 3D printed models to see into the volumes of structures and to see more of the information that imaging exams provide. That's one area. Uh, another area of um, innovation continues to be bioprinting. People often ask about that in terms of uh, printing biological tissues. <clears throat> that continues uh, to advance and I think um, that will get closer to clinical care as that moves forward. And then finally, um, as kind of a, a, a bigger picture, broader extension of 3D imaging, <clears throat> I think we're going to continue to see growth in um, the use of virtual reality and augmented reality um, as a complement to 3D printed models for a wide range of surgical planning and educational applications. Thank you, Dr. Wang. You can find more news at rsna.org news.